Thinking about moving to La Jolla, California? Well, in this video, I'm gonna lay it all out there for you guys and share the good, the bad, the pros and the cons of what it's actually like to live in La Jolla. Now, maybe you visited here once, maybe you've been here over 10 times and you just absolutely love it and you're really considering a move here. I just wanna share with you guys the pros and the cons because there's a big difference from visiting to actually calling La Jolla home. But either way, I want you to be the judge, so let's get after it now. Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. If this is your first time here and you're not too familiar with me, my name is Nicholas. I'm a real estate advisor here in San Diego, and I absolutely love helping you guys make more informed decisions when it comes to San Diego real estate. And I really love helping you guys relocate here from other parts of the country, even the world, and figure out which city or neighborhood is going to be best for you. So if you're thinking about making a move here in a week, a month, or a year, shoot me a text or an email, or just straight up give me a call. I'd be happy to give you the right info and help you make a smooth move here to La Jolla or somewhere else in San Diego. But let's talk a little bit more about La Jolla because I wanna give you a better idea of what it's actually like to live here and give you a better expectation. We're going to dive straight into con number one, which is going to be, it's very crowded, during the peak summer months. Now, when is this? This is gonna be any time from May all the way up to September, because think about it, this is when kids get out of school, this is when parents start taking more time off of work and people start vacationing. And the real crazy part about this is La Jolla is a very big area, but it's only got a population of about 30,000 people. So it's pretty small when you look at the numbers, but it gets hundreds of thousands of vis visitors throughout the year. So you can imagine with that many people visiting, traffic can literally be a nightmare. And it doesn't matter what time of day it is, it could be nine in the morning, it could be 12 noon, it could be 6 p.m. Traffic is likely going to be pretty bad. So it's something you need to brace yourself for and you know it can get frustrating, especially when you're living there and you're dealing with that daily. But even for me, when I'm going there and meeting a client and having a coffee or showing a property, I have to give myself a 15 to 20 minute head start just to make sure, and even then, my clients are still a little late because they didn't brace themselves, but that's okay. But the good news is, you know, it's just really, that traffic will be really bad just during those peak months. So like I said, May to September, and then those outside months, it's actually a lot better it's a lot more mellow. And I actually know a lot of people that own homes there and they actually take off for those three months and they go somewhere else in the country or they go to their second home or whatever that may be. And then they come back after those peak months because guess what, you're in La Jolla and you still have perfect weather even when it's not summer. Now for pro number one, it's going to be how it has some of the greatest and most high-end neighborhoods in San Diego. And according to niche.com, it was actually ranked number six for the best city to live in San Diego. And it's very obvious why, and it's because there's just so much diversity when it comes to some of these neighborhoods and the variety you have. I mean, you have neighborhoods like La Jolla Farms, La Jolla Shores, La Jolla Village, Mirlands, Mirlands West, Bird Rock, UTC, the list goes on and on. But it's always gonna come down to what your lifestyle is looking for. So maybe you're looking for something that's close to downtown where you're walkable to things like the beach, shopping, and other attractions, you're gonna have that or maybe you want something more quiet, a more reserved suburb without that hustle and bustle of the nightlife, you have that too. Or maybe you just want something that's straight up ocean front where you don't even have to go anywhere, you'll also have that. So if you're gonna be actually making a move to La Jolla, you're gonna have plenty of choices. And that's a great segue into con number two, which is going to be high home prices. And to be exact, they're actually the second highest in San Diego, with Rancho Santa Fe coming in first. Now, it's gonna depend on the style of the home, the location, is it detached, is it a condo, does it have views, is it renovated? But on average, you can expect a La Jolla home to cost about $2.8 million. Yes, I said 2.8 million. It's a lot of money, but you need to keep in mind that if you look in places further east, like UTC, you'll find something significantly less, but the look will be a lot different too. But you also need to keep in mind that you can find condos for as low as $500,000, but you can find crazy, beautiful single family homes priced all the way up to 20 plus million. If you'd rather rent before you buy, just so you have a little bit more time to figure out the best neighborhood for you, then you can expect to pay about $1,800 a month for a one bedroom apartment 
in UTC, or as you start to move closer to the coast, it'll run you about $3,000 and up. Now, La Jolla is home to some of the wealthiest people in the world, and there's just so many different lavish neighborhoods, but you need to keep in mind that it wasn't just built for multimillionaires. Now, prices are gonna vary for condominiums and houses depending on where you're looking, and obviously it's gonna be more expensive closer to the ocean. So for some of you that are in a lower price point, you don't have that $2 million budget, keep in mind, Inland La Jolla is still a great area and there's a bunch of different neighborhoods with a lot to offer and a lot of opportunity. Pro number two is going to be the wonderful mix of home styles. Now, this might be my favorite part about La Jolla. And yes, I am a real estate guy, so I really do love architecture and different style homes and floor plans and all that stuff. But La Jolla has no shortage of different styles. And it's quite amazing because you'll see everything from Spanish inspired to beach bungalows to modern homes with big open floor plans and even beachside condos that are just drop dead gorgeous. And these are all within minutes of the beach or some of them are actually just bluff side with amazing views. And what's really cool about this is this actually allows future homeowners the opportunity to find the style of home that fits their personality. Plus, a majority of residents in La Jolla actually own and live in their home, meaning they don't rent them out. And what happens with that is there is just way more care and way more quality put into these homes and the community. That's gonna take us into our final con, which is going to be parking. Now, this one kind of ties into our first con, which is the crowds and, and how traffic can get pretty bad. Parking is exactly the same, maybe a little bit worse, and it's extremely hard to find parking at the, any of the beaches during the summer months. Most parking in the village in downtown La Jolla is going to be about two hours, and you're gonna see it when you go to park, you'll see a sign. And if you don't see a sign around you, look around because there probably is one, but they're mostly gonna be two hour parking and make sure you set some sort of reminder or some sort of clock or something to remind you when that two hours is up because they will write you a ticket and they're quick. And how do I know this? Because I've probably gotten maybe five or six tickets over the course of my life in La Jolla Village and it's because they are on it. They're watching, I don't know what they do. I'm pretty sure they just mark your tire, but I've been to my car, I've been late to my car maybe like in between that minute and five minute range of after the two hours and I've come back to a 50 and $60 ticket. So they're doing a great job on that, kind of sucks. So if you can avoid getting a ticket, definitely do it. But parking downtown La Jolla and some of these neighborhoods can be very, very difficult. For pro number three, it's going to be the proximity to amenities and things to do. Now, I think La Jolla, honestly, is probably in one of the best geographical areas in San Diego. It's very central. It's right on the coast. You can go up to North County really fast if you need to go to Carlsbad or Oceanside. And you're also like 10, 15 minutes from downtown San Diego, right where the airport is. So it's great for commuters and people that have to travel. But overall, I mean, you have pretty much everything luxurious that you can think of. La Jolla has it, and there's just so much shopping. You have University Town Center, which is a big outdoor mall with some very nice high-end stores, some great food. You also have the village of La Jolla, places like Bird Rock. I mean, there's just a ton of shopping to be had, and there's some really great eateries. Not only is La Jolla known for its luxurious shopping, it's really good restaurants, but it's also known for having some of the best outdoor activities in all of San Diego hands down, and not to mention our weather is just always perfect year round, so there's always a way to get outside and go be active. And just to name a few things that you can go out, go outside and do or go see that's new is, I mean, you can go to La Jolla Cove and go snorkeling. You can go stand up paddle boarding at Wind and Sea. You can even go kayaking at La Jolla Shores. You can go see a really good sunset or really good views at a place called Mount Soledad. You also have a nude beach, which is gonna be Black's Beach if you wanna go check that out. Beautiful beach. And you can also go check out a, sh a comedy show at the Comedy Store. So like I said, there is just a ton of things to do and I barely touch on just a little of it. Last but not least, I'm gonna end it with just one more pro because I absolutely can't leave this one out. This is going to be the highly rated schools. When you're living in La Jolla, this means you have access to some of the most top-notch schools in the nation. I'm talking award-winning schools that are beautifully designed. La Jolla is served by the San Diego Unified School District, which consists of about 
12 preschools, six elementary schools, three middle schools, and three high schools, with about half of those 24 being private. Most of those schools that I just mentioned are gonna be ranked very high, and some of which are actually gonna be ranked 10 out of 10. But needless to say, if you're a parent and you're seeking to send your children to one of these schools here in La Jolla and you're making a move, you're gonna have plenty of options. And that's gonna wrap it up. Those are gonna be the pros and the cons of what it's actually like to live here in La Jolla. But overall, La Jolla is gonna be for people who want that exclusive luxury living, luxury shopping, nature, all in one place kind of lifestyle. So depending on your walk of life and what you're looking for, La Jolla could be a great place for you. So if you're thinking about making a move here to La Jolla or somewhere else in San Diego, or you're still trying to feel out which neighborhood is best for you, I'll save you a ton of time. Make sure you shoot me a text or an email or just straight up give me a call. I'd be happy to help. And you know, I hope you guys found a lot of value in that and I will see you guys in the next video.